Now another important aspect and this image is something which you should be very very familiar with it comes in almost so many exams it comes or some part of this question comes okay so it's very important to understand this picture you'll see it in all your books you'll see it in a lot of places you need to understand what this picture basically means so the first image is that of a non-pregnant patient so this is how the vasculature in the uterus looks like in a non-pregnant patient so here you have the endometrium and here you have the myometrium okay and what happens here you have the branches of the uterine artery so this is a branch of the uterine artery right here below okay here and here you have the spiral arterioles okay coming from this artery and they are going up and supplying the myometrium and the endometrium all right so this is how a normal non-pregnant vasculature would look like the second diagram is of a normal pregnancy so what happens what is the major change can you notice here you can see how dilated the spiral arteriole has become okay can you see this nice big huge dilatation of the spiral arteriole okay and it is it has become like this because what happens in pregnancy okay the extra villous trophoblast remember there's something called the extra villous trophoblast okay so the extra villous trophoblast which are these cells you see here okay what they do is they go and line the spiral arterioles okay and by lining them they make them very relaxed and they cause vasodilatation which is very important because the utero-placental unit needs a lot of blood flow in pregnancy okay and to achieve this the arterioles have to dilate all right and this is achieved by invasion by the extra villous trophoblast so we have an endovillous trophoblast which is here and we have an extra villous trophoblast now the endovillous trophoblast helps in exchange of nutrients and gas but the extra villous trophoblast is what actually helps dilate the spiral arterioles so that it becomes nice relaxed and a lot of blood now starts entering the placental unit and a lot of blood goes to the fetus the growing fetus okay now this invasion of extra villous trophoblasts occurs in two phases okay it happens in two phases one in the first trimester and the second in the second trimester early on so the early second trimester is when the second wave of trophoblastic invasion happens now this is normally what happens but what happens in preeclampsia in preeclampsia because this is a preeclamptic arteriole okay what has happened can you see there is invasion by the extra villous trophoblast but it is very very less okay so there is some dilatation but it is not enough to what should actually be required and this partial invasion of extra villous trophoblast is what is the etiology behind preeclampsia developing okay so there is partial invasion okay and usually the second wave of trophoblastic invasion is what is affected that is the one which is happening in the second trimester of pregnancy so as a result you can see this is the, this is the myometrium the myometrium the arterioles in the myometrium are still so vasoconstricted only the endometrium ones are slightly vasodilated okay so there's a this deficient or this partial trophoblastic invasion okay and this leads to not enough vasodilatation of the spiral arterioles less blood supply to the fetus and this eventually triggers the pathophysiology of preeclampsia so it's very important to understand the deficient trophoblastic invasion of extravillous trophoblasts in the spiral arteriole.